Roll for Crit presents How to Play Aliens Bug Hunt in 5 Minutes or Less or More. Aliens Bug Hunt is the cooperative dice game of xenomorph combat and survival tactics, designed by Ryan Miller and published by Upper Deck Entertainment. Your goal in Aliens Bug Hunt is to complete three missions, then escape the compound before it's overrun. Each player begins with a player board, a squad figure with a colored base, and three character cards, two generic grunts, and one named character with a special ability. These cards can be placed in any order onto your player board in the upper half of your card slots so that the ready text is showing underneath. Whichever card is placed in the rightmost spot of your board becomes your point man. When aliens start attacking, they'll be most likely to take that damage. Each player places their squad figure at the Sector 3 entrance space of the APC tile. To the left of that, you'll see the Hive Track, which begins with its Hive token at the number 1 spot. Anytime that token hits a space with this Hive symbol next to it, it triggers a Xenomorph phase. And yes, that means you start the game with a Xenomorph phase. For now, you'll only need to worry about Step 3 of this phase, spawning Xenomorphs. Draw the top card of the tracking deck. Tracking cards are separated into five sectors, corresponding to the five sectors of the APC tile. Each blip showing in a sector tells you how many xenomorphs will be spawned there. At the start of the game, there won't be any location tiles in play, so for now, just place the indicated numbers of xenomorph dice into the appropriate empty spaces right next to the APC tile. It doesn't matter which side is showing on a die when a xenomorph spawns, all you need to know is that they're out there waiting for you. After this initial phase is complete, the game proper can begin. Each round, one card will be revealed from the top of the phase deck. The phase deck is made up of three colored cards for each player, one lieutenant command card, and one xenomorph phase card for each player. Usually this card will match the color of one of the squads in play, and the player whose squad it is gets to take their turn. If it's the lieutenant command card with multiple colors, players decide as a group which squad will act. On your turn you will first move, then complete one action. Let's go over movement first. You'll have three points of movement to spend, and you don't have to use all of it if you don't want to. Entering a new tile typically costs you one of those movement points. If you're moving into an empty space, you'll draw a new location tile from the face-down tile stack and reveal it there. Make sure you position it so that the entrance, indicated by this bright light, is connected to your previous location. If the new tile has an objective icon on it, place an objective token there. If it has a hive symbol with a number in it, place that number of xenomorph dice on the tile. When placing new tiles, keep in mind that the complex grid cannot exceed a size of 5 tiles wide and 6 tiles long. After revealing a new tile, your movement is ended for the turn even if you still have movement points left. If you didn't reveal a new one, you can keep going, spending one movement point for each adjacent tile entered. Some of the paths leading out of tiles are obstructed. These are known as barriers. You can still move through barriers into adjacent locations, but doing so will cost you two movement points instead of one. Oh, and if there are any xenomorphs on your location, you can't exit that tile, unless there's another squad there with you, or if you're moving through a non-barrier path to a location holding another squad. If you're alone, you're gonna have to take the aliens out before leaving. After spending as many of your three movement points as you can or want to, you get to take one action. There are four actions you can choose from. First, you can shoot at nearby xenomorphs. To do so, choose one or more of your character cards and deplete them by moving them to the lower end of your player board. Each character has a firepower value indicated here. Add up the firepower of all the characters you're using for this fight, and that total is how many xenomorphs you get to target. If there are any in your own tile, you have to start with them first. Simply pick up the dice and roll them. If you get a blank result, that's a kill. Remove them from the board, back to your dice pool. A claw mark result means that the alien is still alive and remains in place. If you roll the red alien mouth icon, that means it's still alive and it's fighting back. Your squad receives one wound token for each of those symbols showing. You can distribute any wound tokens you received amongst the characters that just fired as you see fit. If you have any firepower left over, you can use it to target xenomorphs on adjacent tiles, as long as they're not separated from you by a barrier. Also, you can't target any xenomorphs that aren't on a discovered tile yet. Roll their dice just like before. Blanks are killed and returned to the pool as normal. However, if you roll one of the other two symbols on an adjacent tile, this time those aliens will move into your tile, and they will not inflict any wounds. Later in the game, you'll want to use the reload action. This allows you to ready any of your depleted characters by moving their cards back up to the ready position. Only readied characters will be able to take part in attacking. Another action you can choose is to breach a barrier. Take a breach token and place it on top of a barrier on one side of your current location. 
From now on, it will only cost one movement point to get through here, and you can shoot at adjacent xenomorphs in that direction. Lastly, if there's an objective token on your tile, you can use an action to capture it. Place it onto any one of your three mission cards with an empty space. Each mission card has a special benefit that you can utilize if there's a token on it. To do so, flip one token on the card face down and follow the card's instructions when appropriate. This does not count as an action. Each mission effect can only be activated a total of three times during the game. Once a player has moved and completed one action, their turn is over. A new card is revealed from the phase deck and play continues. There's still one other type of card that can come out of the phase deck, and that's a Xenomorph phase card. If one of these comes up, the Hive token moves forward one space and another phase card is drawn. Again, anytime the Hive token hits a space with that Hive icon, a new Xenomorph phase occurs. This time you'll have to go through all three steps, beginning with the attack. All squads take one wound token for each Xenomorph in their current location and place them on their point man. Squads sharing the same space can divide those wounds up amongst themselves as they see fit. It. Next, any Xenomorphs not already in a space with a squad will attempt to move into an adjacent space with a squad. If there are multiple valid tiles, players choose where they move. If a Xenomorph's current location and all of its adjacent locations are empty, it instead moves one space toward the APC tile. Unlike squads, Xenomorphs can move freely through barriers and the complex walls. If any Xenomorphs make it to the APC tile during this step, they escape. Place them back in the game box, separate from your Xenomorph dice pool. For each sector in which one or more aliens escape during this phase, the Hive Tracker moves up an additional space. Don't move it up for each individual alien that escapes, just once for each group from each sector. Finally, carry out the spawn step, draw a new tracking card, and add xenomorphs to each sector according to the number of blips shown there on the card. For each indicated sector, you'll begin by placing them on the tile closest to the APC tile with a Hive icon. If you've placed the number of dice there equal to the number printed in the Hive icon and you still have more, then move on to the next closest Hive icon in that sector and so on. If you've filled up all the hives and you still have more to spawn, place them in the empty space closest to the APC tile without a location tile placed there. If that sector has reached its maximum length of six tiles, then simply place all of the extra aliens in the final tile in that row. Then repeat the process for any other sectors on the card. Some tracking cards also have text instructions, which should be followed after spawning. If the Hive Tracker reaches the final space on the Hive Track, an additional Xenomorph Phase card is added to the discard pile of the Phase Deck, making future rounds more dangerous. If the Hive Track would advance again from that final space, simply loop it back around to space number one, triggering yet another Xenomorph Phase. If at any point you need to spawn Xenomorphs, but there are none left in your dice pool, the game is lost. You also lose if you run out of tracking cards, or Xenomorph phase cards, or if all of a squad's characters are killed. This brings us back to those wounds that Xenomorphs can inflict. Each character has an armor level. If they have a number of wounds equal to that value, and would take another one, they instead flip one of their wound tokens over. If it's blank, nothing happens. If it shows the KIA icon, the character is killed and removed from the game. If a character has the maximum number of wound tokens and they're all flipped as blanks, they'll die the next time they receive a wound. Once a mission card has three objective tokens placed onto it, it's considered complete. After completing all three missions, all players need to get their squads back to the Sector 3 entrance safely in order to secure victory. In conclusion, move, shoot aliens, complete missions, try not to get killed. That's Aliens Bug Hunt in a nutshell, did you get all that?